debate. I'd love to yes, debate you right now true. on that. If you if you want to show to show me to be inconsistent or whatever, we can get. I, I don't. No, 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 I, I don't can, show I can basically to be. You don't have to be inconsistent. There are plenty of consistent anti-vegan positions. Oh, okay. You just so think what, what kind of arguments do you have against against me? Against you. I mean, yeah. I'm, not, I'm, I'm not a vegan. I'm saying, what kind of arguments could you give if you're not going to object to me not being vegan? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, rounds or whatever. I mean, it depends on your moral system, right? I mean, some people have moral vegan systems vegan. that are consistent and would, in principle, be anti-vegan, um, but they would also, in principle, be. I mean, go against. I would at least I would contend go against things that a lot of people would find. Um, would find kind of crazy. I mean, we would go in favor of things a lot of people would find kind of crazy. I mean, you can have a consistent anti-vegan position. Um, there are plenty of people who do have a consistent anti-vegan position. Um, so where would you go if someone posted or forwarded uh, a consistent anti-vegan position? Where would you where go, would you go then? Yeah, I mean, I would show the logical extension of it and say, okay, look, here's where it leads. And is this something you're genuinely comfortable with? And if they say, yes, I bite all the bullets, then I'm saying, okay, there's nothing I could convince you logically. Um, I can, what I can do is show that, look, here's the extensions and the things you bite the bullet on. There's a lot, of, all I can do is say, there's a lot of people who would find that crazy. And I think if you honestly looked into it, um, I think you'd find it crazy too. I mean, look, I used to be a huge anti-vegan. Uh, before I came to the Ask Yourself Discord, well, I well, well, let me ask you: What do you think is more? What do you think is more probable? Do you, Do you think it's more probable that um, everyone who eats meat, um, or not everyone, but a large portion of the people who eat meat, actually have some type of like moral or uh, other type of inconsistency in their position, or is it more likely the case? that the way that you think that they're reasoning to these things is actually not the way, in fact, that they're doing it. And another thing to highlight is a lot of these people track these things. Uh, I w I'm going to use the word intuitively because they can't really say exactly, they couldn't really put their finger on how exactly the reasoning uh, is going. So they're not, it's like um, you're already trying to like get into a conversation with someone that's, unsure as to how they're getting to that getting to that point in do you un do you understand what i'm saying i mean my position on this is most people are just haven't thought of these issues most people i mean i know that i haven't gone really in depth of it most people just haven't thought of the issue at all i think and or at least in in a in a large amount of depth and most people don't even know logical consistency I, mean, I think most people don't even appreciate the importance of logical consistency no, I, think, and most people most, also... I think everyone knows about logical consistency. no 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 I, i'm not that's not no, what that's i said a, shameless a... no, no, no 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 but i mean it's like most a people don't of our language i think that everyone shameless, 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 to be shameless. Consistent. I, I understand that but shameless most people don't appreciate like if you were to ask someone like what happens when you are not logically what happens when you have a framework that's not logically consistent like if you ask someone what's the principle of explosion like they don't appreciate like what can i talk to a lot of people about this they're like okay they have like there's an no, enormous amount of people at least in my experience that would go like okay well i'm going to be inconsistent here like i have an inconsistency here or like they would they would bite the and most people I think that's how mo what happens with most people now there are people who would say okay no i need to be consistent i understand that and I don't bite the bullet on these extensions, but I think most of people, like if we're just speculating about what we think, I think I would speculate most people haven't really delved deep into this issue. Um, to get back well, no, to your I don't question. Think it's, I, I, think that, I don't think it's that way. I think, think that they have delved deep into it, right? And that they understand how it works, but they're just not, they're able, they understand how it works, but they're not able to like formally articulate it. Let me give you an example. So, this is actually true with almost any language, but we'll just, as the analogy, I'll just use like English uh, as the, as the um, host language. So if you ask a native English speaker, right? And he's a native speaker, he's a natural speaker. It's his mother tongue, right? And you go and you ask him about the syntax of his language, right? And to break down the syntax and how things, how things operate with, the language and he's a, he's a speaker of the language and knows exactly the right way to speak and, and speaks very consistently in that manner but when you ask him to explain the syntax and how it works together right he can't 
formally sit down and articulate it, right? But he knows how it worked. And he could demonstrate it's worked and it's right. And I think that when people, I think that that's what's going on in the moral case. Not, not that they haven't thought about it. Because think about it, it would be like saying that we haven't thought about our language. No, we've that's thought about our language. That's we not exactly our language. Translation. We understand how to speak our language, just as if they understand uh, their moral position, right? And they, they just aren't able to fully bring it you know, to bear exactly how they're arriving at it or why it all fits together in that way, like, this, like the syntax. And so what I think is going on is um, a lot of times, like the Ask Yourself gentleman is preying on a, a very fallacious and kind of dishonest um, uh, thing that happens when people are in that kind of naive state. And he apply a, a generalizations about some trait to individuals, right? And then he derives a contradiction when he can show an individual that lacks those traits that you still would think that those rights need to be conferred on, right? So he's assuming, right, that the people are arguing on an individual basis, that the, the way that they're reasoning is, is applying traits um, uh, categorically to an individual basis. And I don't think that's how it's happening at all. I mean, I think that they're, they're actually applying it um, on like a group scale. And, and when that happens, I mean, his argument kind of largely breaks down and it shows you that that's exactly what's going on. And that's, that's the thing he's subtly trying to exploit. It's like, it's actually kind of dishonest. Well, again, so there's a lot of things you said, Seamus. Um, so the first thing is I'm not saying that they haven't thought about it. That's not like an accurate representation of what I said. Like they haven't like real, and when I say that, what I'm really getting at is that they haven't really explored the topic in detail and in depth. That's what my, that's what I think most people, I think most people haven't explored this topic in detail and in depth. Um, as far as the applying um, these things to group context, yeah, you can apply it to group context. You can say like, okay, well, this only works in a group context. I mean, and you can see if you, we take that, you take that consistent, consistently as well. I mean, look, I mean, and when, when, just to be clear, when trait can be, extrinsic, extrinsic, it can be an accidental property or it could be an essential property. It really could be anything. It can be someone just saying, okay, well, this is my preferences. That, that it could be a trait and say, okay, well, that's the difference. It could be anything and it could be literally anything. So it's not limited to one and it's not limited to one trait either. It's not limited to one thing. It could be a whole list and, or collective of things and you can have separate axioms that only apply them in one context and not another context i mean i've gone down all of these rabbit holes remember i'm like only a vegan for like two months or so i think that's about right but when i i like had a two-month battle with isaac um i was like a huge anti-vegan um and yeah, I mean, I was ultimately convinced by the name of the trade argument after I like fully understood it. And I like, I'm hearing the things you're saying, and I do think it's a miss. Like, maybe it's not conveyed the best way, but I do think, like, properly understood, like, I'm in all of its properly understood and fully hashed out. I mean, that is ultimately what convinced me. And if I like, and I tried to do a lot of things to get around it. I spent a I mean, lot. A of time. argument convinced you. Um, I don't think it's a fallacious argument, but that's fine. I mean, uh, so uh, what I mean by fallacious again? is that is that it's assuming a principle that they're not employing, right? Right. What's and the so a nerd, like they, like yeah, let me give you an example, right? This is just one example of some of the one of the type of inconsistencies that I've seen derived out of the name your trade argument. It's very very. This is like the cookie cutter example possible, right? So you'll say Go something like, um, you'll, name, you'll name a trait, right? In virtue of this trait, uh, rights, are, um, rights are conferred on this, per, this individual or whatever, right? You, specifically the individual. So let's, let's pick a trait, right? Let's say, um, you know, conscious, consciousness and, um, you know, able, uh, able to uh, reflect and, uh, you know, contemplate the future and, you know, all these high level, level, uh, you know, whatever, you know, brain activity, high level stuff that, you know, you would place value on, right? And so then, and then ask yourself, let's say something like, uh, well, what about um, 
a coma patient, right? That's, uh, you know, that they don't have those things, right? And then really we don't want that, well, they don't have any rights that we should just go ahead and, you know, we, you know, if we want to kill them or eat them or do whatever we wanted, it would, ju it would just be fine. And so he tries to generate an inconsistency because uh, largely we want to say that humans have, largely the inference, which is fallacious, is that humans have these traits, or I mean, these traits are what we value, right? And this individual has this trait, therefore this individual has the rights. This individual doesn't have the trait, therefore this individual doesn't have the rights. And that con conflicts morally. So we're like, no, that's, that's wrong. That's, that runs counter to our moral intuitions about what should be done to the cancer patient. So let me let, so what's interesting about that, the reason why it runs counter to their intuitions is because they're not tracking it in that same method. The reason why it sounds fucked up to them is because they're not reasoning to it on an individual basis. So, so Seamus, the, the, the specific question of name the trait wasn't, it, it was to name the trait present in the human context, which, uh, sorry, present in the animal context, which if applied to the human context, then you would say it's okay to kill the human. So if you're going to say that I'm going to give you the X, Y, and Z trait and then you're going to say, I'm not going to kill the human. You're, it's not like you haven't actually answered the question in the first place. The question was not so just you realize the, the argument that I generated is just the contraposition of the argument you're talking about, right? right. You're saying, you're saying our arguments are the same. The argument's exactly the same, Robbie. So you're saying, you're, look, look, I'll show you they're the same. So you're saying name the trait uh, in the animals, right, uh, which is in virtue of which that it's okay to kill them that humans do not possess. Now, I just, I just gave the contraposition. All I said was, name the trait in humans by virtue of which, that animals don't possess, by virtue of which they possess, that they should be conferred rights. It's the same argument. It's just, it's just it's, been... Um, oh, okay, yeah, sure. So what's, so what's the it's trait been then? Contra yeah. contraposed. So, it's, so don't accuse me of like, oh, you're giving a different argument. No, that's the name your trait it's argument, dude. Well, no, no, no. I mean, look, here, not, here's, well, it, the name the name, the name not the trait, the trait actually not isn't... Not the trait that's the well, issue on, that Jim was bringing up. Shame. Shameless. The name of the trait argument actually in premise conclusion form isn't either of these things, but like that's a that's a side angle point. The thing yes, is, but you can contrapose it and turn no, it into that argument. I understand argument. what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. It, it, it's not an issue of me failing to understand what you're saying. I'm just failing to understand. Like, so what I say actually when I argue for name when I use the name of the trait rhetorical rhetorical technique, essentially, what I say when someone says, um, it, well, it doesn't justify it in the human context. Like, I push them to that. And I say, okay, I don't like Im Im immediately say they're logically contradictory. I said either there's two things that could happen. Number one is they could have an incomplete, what they gave, what they put on the table could be incomplete. So really there's like some other axiom in their moral system that they haven't described that would like give a different context in this situation. So you mentioned one of them, right? So they named the wrong trait. They, they named the wrong trait basically. No, no, not that they named the wrong trait. Like they named an, an incomplete trait. Like for example, they could have included. They oh, and failed, I also they failed to leave out the trait that, in virtue of which, would give the proper justification. So they failed to name the trait, right? Oh, okay. I, yeah, if you want to say it like that, sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, fine. That's fine. Okay. Um, and then, but then again, like I, I'm, I try to be fair to. Them. All I'm just trying to say to you, Seamus, is like I try to be fair to them. I don't just immediately pin them and say like, okay, you're contradicting yourself. What I do is I say. No, I wasn't saying you. I was I was more or less referring to ask yourself. I mean, I've never ever seen you around. I'm not certain how you approach it methodologically, but I have seen a little bit of this ask yourself fella, and that is how he operates, and he, and he does uh, try to apply that reasoning. And then you were the gentleman that said that that argument somehow convinced you, right? And so, like, well, I yeah, I mean, I've hashed it out with Isaac. A subtle fallacy regardless, you regardless of how well, well no, because that well, regardless like, of how well you pin people with the argument. Seamus is still pointing a problem with the argument, right? If you don't apply rights on an individual basis, and still you apply them to general groups, that the argument falls apart. No, yeah, well, I would know. You can apply the argument on the group level too. That's fine. Um, you right, can say like, Seamus? name the trait, then we can do it on the group level. Name the uh, name the trait on the what what is in in the human group level that, if present in the animal group level, you would uh, grant rights. Yeah, yeah, but you understand that that takes away. the the opportunity for you to generate a counterexample by finding a human counterexample that we wouldn't confer the rights to. It's going to run. No, it's just a space. I mean, isn't this just person. like? That no, just, I mean that's, that just blocks I, that move. No, what I'm saying no, is, they just listen apply it to, to the group context. 
So what it means is that it, it strips you of being able to point to a human and say, well, look here, this is a counterexample. Look at this. Human. No, there's no, you're never going to find a counterexample within the. That's, uh, that's fine. No, no, no. That's, right. that's, that's, that's fine. That's totally fine. I get, I get what you're saying. I'm not, under, I'm not like, I'm not understanding this. No, I mean, that's, that's totally fine. No, I mean, I, honestly, like if, if there were a hypothetical, if it wasn't even a real world example, if it was a hypothetical group of humans on the group level, that was equivalent to the intelligence of cows or the, or the sentience of those cows. Like I, I personally wouldn't be comfortable um, farming them either. And that's what convinced me. And if you're going to say, if someone says, okay, well, I would be convinced on that group level that it would be fine, then you can hold that position. And that's consistent. Okay. So, um, what, so what convinced you? What convinced me? Like, again, you can. Well, it's, it was a whole long battle with, with, I mean, this was, I don't know if I even have, I mean, because I've gone through multiple stages. Like, so what eventually got me to, like, from, uh, from like full like it used to be like a huge meat eater, and what eventually got me to. Um, what is it like, is like to be a huge meat eater? Were you like an enthusiast or something? Or oh yeah, I was like a huge yeah, anti-vegan. Sir. I was like huge anti-vegan. I like I have like I still have like health arguments against veganism that are like, like posted around in like fitness gurus and stuff like that. I'm like really popular. <laughs> so like, ace, ace. It's probably one of the people that were just you, like you, you then. You act like you act like there's like a whole like subculture for people who are anti vegan. Like there's some kind of like Discord server called like Carnism or something. Come on. Come on. Yeah, almost like it's like Carnist Corner or something. Crazy. Yeah, something like something that. Like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I used to be like a huge anti vegan. Um actually if you like I don't know if you guys if you guys anyone ever familiar with like Ian Brown McCarthy? No. Yeah. No, but if you hum a few bars, I'll give it a shot. Yeah, anyway, I mean, like, he's a popular, like, fitness guy. He's got, like, 20-something thousand or a couple, like, ten to tens of thousands or, like, uh, followers or whatnot. Um, and then there's, like, a couple of other anti-vegan arguments. But, like, in general, like, the, the idea, like, like group, like, you could apply name the traits to group, and I, the, I wouldn't be comfortable biting the bullet on the group level either. It's just, like, that's it's me. Like that. I'm, so I mean, I mean, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of a, an argument by this um, philosopher uh, called Peter Singer, right? And he has a, he has an yeah, argument for marginal cases on this. Yep. Yeah, it plays on this same type of subtle fallacy, and so it's um, and it's not it's not like a formal fallacy. I mean, it's an informal fallacy that's very subtle. It's not very obvious, right? But it but it is fallacy. It's it's basically um, like. It's basically, uh, I mean, I, it, it's hard to explain, but it, it's just, it just straightforwardly um, doesn't have the inference that it's uh, saying that it does. And so, like, he's saying basically, you know, if you were to, I, I don't know what you call the argument. I don't know, think I know it by the name, but you're talking it's about the argument for marginal argument. cases. It's called the argument for marginal cases for P- Peter Singer. You're talking it's the about? one about donating to charity, right? No. Oh, donating a charity? No, that's. Are we talking about Parfit now, or what? What do you mean? Like, what? I'm not. I'm confused. No, I thought. I thought it was Peter Singer. I. I thought it was an argument where it was basically that, um, if, so like, if you were to, go have a two hundred dollar pair of shoes and you were to see someone drowning, right? And you realize that if you, uh, you know. You wanted to save them, but you would have to jump in and ruin your two hundred dollars shoes. That's shoes. Parfit. Would that's Parfit. Has, has to... okay, yeah, that's, that's not Peter Singer. That, that's 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 I think I'm almost positive that's Parfit. Okay, that's fine. It's not important to the the content, but it is it is good to know. So I, I've dealt I've, a, I've dealt with that like really like I've I've dealt with that argument like really extensively for like hashing out positive rights and how to constrain them. By the way, like I made out like a whole video of a, on that. It's, it's to hash out what? To hash out like positive rights and how to constrain positive rights, like that's a, that I, I do think that's like a good example of like like something that goes against their intuitions. Like, so for example, like yeah, I mean, if there's a child drowning uh, in front of you, do you have does it have an obligation for you to help it? Um, if all you're going to do is get your feet wet a little bit, it's not the argument. Um, for giving charity, the argument that leads to giving charity isn't that like how it starts. I'm pretty sure that's how it starts. 
I mean, well, I've listened to Pipe well, listen give though? this exact argument. What, what what is your understanding of it? My understanding of what now the what, the, arg- the Parfit's it? argument for charity or like what are we talking about now? Whatever you think you're talking about. Well, I think I was I I my understanding was that Shamos brought up an argument that Parfit made uh, for giving charity, and basically it was a positive rights argument. And the argument was that well, let's say you were watching a child in a puddle. Uh, or that was drowning in a, in a pond or whatever, drowning, and uh, all you lo- all you would lose is a little bit of uh, getting your feet wet a little bit. Do you have a is there an obligation, a positive obligation for you to save that child? And uh, if most people are going to say yes, most people say it's not just a virtue; it's an obligation. It's not just your prerogative. And then he concludes that well, hey, the that's kind of the well. Let, let's say it wasn't just water on your feet let's say it was you know let's say your feet your your shoes were going to get ruined and they were worth 100 bucks or let's say you were carrying a laptop and your laptop was 5000 bucks so you do st- you still have a moral obligation for letting that child die or let not letting that child die and most people would still say yeah i still have that obligation and then he tries to say okay well that's what's going on with the kids in africa and distance, and then he tries to make a case, okay, well, and distance away is not a differentiating factor that would absolve you of this obligation. So he makes an argument for that, and then he concludes that you need to really, like, give a whole lot more charity than you're giving right now. I'm not sure what this had to do with the topic of veganism, but it has. it's an interesting no, topic no, that no, I made no, a whole video on. It's like, playing on the same type of subtle fallacy. I think there's a, there, it's very close to what with the ask yourself, ask yourself. I'm not really he's, sure he's what the fallacy is. He's employing a type of. Well, what I'm saying is, is he's saying that that you ought re that I'm not. It's not that that the reasoning that's being taken place is one that's going in this manner. So he's accused. He's basically the underlying assumption is that the person is inferring on these bases, right? And it's it's on on these bases which they make the inferences of of whether to save that person or not, right? And the inferences that he is calling into question are not the ones that people are intuitively tracking, right? Because like, like I think that when, so there, there, there is a difference and I think it ha- largely has to do with um, uh, the visceral nature of it. The, and, and, I, and I would say state the proximity and I would, I would definitely want to argue with the proximal grounds like i would i would never concede that point because i think that uh when you're presented with something that's so immediate to you and it's so visceral it's it's just so obvious why it's more compelling to you, right and we have limited time and we have limited resources right so we're it's it's very very um sufficient i mean i mean efficient to limit yourself to the things that are more proximal, right? Because if you, if you, you know, what are we going to do? Save the environment. So, stop the cows from dying, right? You are, are you familiar with his bed, argument, right? Uh, so, against so, like why? Are you familiar with his argument, like his response to why it's like his his to why he illustrates that it's um, distance. Are you familiar with his counter argument to what you're saying? Because like he deals with what you're what you're addressing. No, like, but I would love to hear you tell me. Like, yeah, yeah. Like Okay. I mean, so basically what you're giving me examples, you're, you're using distance and you're saying it's, well, there's a correlate to distance and that's like your ability or the ease of you to accomplish something like further, it's farther away. So it takes more resources to get there or it takes more energy to get to those things. I mean, do, no, or that's like, okay, well, what did then you tell me then? Like what's, what's the, why is distance? I said the proximity in its viscerality is what I'm saying. When things are proximal, they're more visceral to you. Right. And so the visceral nature of something is what prompts you, right? And so it's, it's, the, it's by which of that thing, that's the motivating force, right? It's not it, it, the person that's putting forward the argument, Parfit or whoever, it wants to say that the motivating factors are, is, a, is a logical chain of reasoning, right? And a lot, and the, and he's oh, to I bring see. Okay, I got you. Yeah. And so it's, and, it, and I'm, not, I'm not just saying it's, let's be non cognitivist about this. But what I'm saying is, there's a non-cognitivist element, right, to it that explains the motivating factors, right? And so he's asking you for motivations. This is another problem with him. 
He's asking you for motivations you to know, act. You know, I, I, I understand. And motivations to act, listen, motivations to act are always, always going to be need two things, right? You're going to need a belief and a desire combo, right? Think about being in a house that's on fire, right? Well, in order to make the action right, to get up and run out of the house, you would need to believe the house is on fire, maybe believe that the fire will kill you, and then have the desire not to die, right? And then, then it seems like if you have those things, those belief and desire combos, then you'd be motivated to leave the house. But if, if you just had the belief yeah, combo, shameless, I'm I not- believe the house is on fire, I believe it's going to kill me, but I don't desire, d- desire to die or I don't, I'm indifferent, then you'll just you know, stay and you know, you'll burn up and die. All right, so, so, okay, if I like, okay, like, so here's the thing. Um, I'm not talking about any of these descriptive things. Like, I don't really care. Um, what I care about, like, I understand what you're saying. It's just I don't see it relevant in terms of like me addressing it with respect to my moral system. Like, I care about having a moral system, and whether that's a whether I take a whatever meta ethical view I take, whether it's a human subjectivist approach or. Uh, whether it's, uh, I don't take an error theory approach. It's probably will be a human subjectivist approach. Or even if I, whether I was a moral realist or a, or a human subjectivist, realist, non-realist, uh, regardless of my meta-ethical framework, what I do care about is I care about having a normative theory that involves principles. I'm not a moral particularist, and I want my principles to be consistent. And I want my state my the statements that my moral system generates whether something that determines whether something is right or wrong to be based on principles and have certain things that guide it um so that's something that i would need to reconcile now you can say that well there's just something visceral about it and that makes it different yeah but we could make those principles right yeah you can turn that into a principle i mean sure your principle is your viscerality but then, but then again, like you what can your viscerality justify then? Can your in your moral system? Can your viscerality justify anything? Are there constraints on it? I mean, what what does your viscerality? I mean, well, I mean, I'm just saying we could just we could just make a modus ponens formulation, right? Create an argument, create a categorical structure, which you are saying that that's what you want to be able to reason from categoric and be able to apply it uh, as a generalizations. And so let's create one of those structures with the content that I forwarded embedded in it, right? So X is, uh, no, visceral, visceral experiences um, that I take a uh, negative regard to um, prompt, uh, prompt me to act immediately, right? X act is visceral, X acts prompts me to act yeah. immediately. Sounds I mean, pretty descriptive to me, Seamus. I'm not, does it, are, are you saying that that's something that, I, like, I don't, I don't care what prompts you to act something. Like, what I care about no, is- No, I'm saying mo- you need a principle to generalize. There's your principle. I gave you, 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 uh, you asked and ordered, and then you just got it served. I, no, I asked, asked for, for a normative, else. I asked for a normative principle. All I heard was a descriptor. That is normative. Oh, 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 so you're, okay, you're saying so that whatever is, your viscerality, what your viscerality determines moral arts. Is that what you're saying? In your system? No, I'm saying you could you could make it's a normative it's a normative statement, right? It's that you know I uh, visceral um, or I mean you could change it to make it if you say something like visceral um, experiences um, ought prompt me to act or some shit. I mean if you want to, it doesn't. It doesn't oh, okay, yeah, yeah, you can. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah, can yeah, make yeah. it normative. It doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. If you want a normative principle, there it is. Yeah, that's fine. Then you could you have named the trait. Your trait is your viscerality, and that's the difference. Your your viscerality, which has guided you to value yeah, one over the other. What's Parfit's response? What's, oh, what's Parfit, this, what's Parfit, this? I mean, I imagine Parfit would just say, okay, well, your vis- if that's your viscerality, I mean, look, if your viscerality is your principle, then you're, in principle, I mean, it could just justify anything as long as that's your viscerality. I mean, could it not? Uh, well, look at all the other things that could be justified if that's, if that's what your guiding principle is. And I just, to me, to someone like me, and to a lot, I think to a lot of people, they would look at that as a principle to justify things in their moral system. And I would say to me, that would, that's not something I would want to hold as part of my moral system. Now you could hold it. I mean, you, that's that up to you. It is precisely what you hold. No, that is precisely what you hold because what's visceral mm-hmm. is going to change uh, person to person. So, I mean, when you see something, I mean, you're saying that when you see something like that, you, so the, the, okay, so I'll just bust you open like this. When you see the person in the pond drowning, is that not visceral to you? 
Is it? I mean, of course you, it's this. Of course it's this. You want to deny those things? That doesn't mean it's my moral system. You're making a category error now. It's, of course it is visceral to me. But the category error here is you're confusing the first tier. Of course, all, you can make the... I could even steal, man, what you're saying. You can say that all of these normative theories are based on our viscerality. You can make that case. You can do... You can go hyper-particularist on me. You can say... Or preferences. You can say your, pre, well, your base-level preferences are just... All of the normative theories that you draw are based on your base-level preferences. Or the normative theories that you draw are based on your viscerality. You can make that case. I'll agree with you on it. Sure. Fine. Great. Um, I don't really care. Um, that's not what I'm in. That's I'm not interested in the primary tier. The normative system is what I'm interested in, and that's even that that is based off my preferences and viscerality. But I care about what the principles that are on the table in terms of the secondary tier, which is our my subjectively bootstrapped principles okay. that go into my normative. But, theory. but remember how that was functioning dialectically. I was just trying to show you that if the arguments, the uh, the one from Parfit here, the one to ask yourself. Uh, is employing i'm accusing of using of employing the same subtle and formal fallacy right and that's like i said i'm just going to describe it simply as assuming that you're applying a certain principle uh that you're in fact aren't right so when i respond to parfit you, you'll notice that i applied a principle that he was mistaken in thinking i was applying or or something you know something like that right however trivial it may be and then i can't and speak then to the same thing is happening yeah, I can't speak to Parfit because I don't know if he actually claims this, but I've spoken to, to ask yourself a lot on this, um, and I can tell you what he would say, and maybe you can say that he was, like, representing it, like, not the best built before, but if you, like, give that example, he wouldn't call you inconsistent. I don't, I, if I, like, explain this out to you, he wouldn't say you're inconsistent. He would just, he would more or less just say, okay, well, look what that leads to if you have this principle, and that's what, that's where it leads to, and it, most people would say, okay, well, if that's the second, if that's on the second order tier and not just the first order tier, then uh, most people would uh, say it leads to positions that most people would not be comfortable accepting. Now, I don't think he would call you inconsistent if you spell this out and say, okay, well, I mean, you act, you have named the trait. Your trait is your viscerality. I mean, it's not, I don't see an inconsistency. I don't think Isaac would say that you're being inconsistent. Okay, and then with, to ask yourself, was naming is a certain application that's not on an individual basis, but on an entire you know, species or group, however you want to. Yeah, you, you can, you can do it like that too. That kind it's of fine, fine shame. What I'm saying is that's the, so I'm just saying that's what I was trying to show was analogous to Parfit's argument. That's, it, I just see them as being analogous. I see the arguments being employed in the same way and I see them being subtly fallacious in the kind of same way. Yeah, I mean, like when I, sometimes what I do, I mean, I don't see that as a, like a, a fallacy. I mean, you can maybe say, try to make the case that's an informal fallacy. Where, because like, if you want to say that there's an a, an implication, I don't even think I make the implication when I argue it. Um, because like, and sometimes what I've done is I just say like, I get to the point where I'm like, look, listen, do you have a normative theory? If what is your normative theory? Like, I just try to cut to the chase. Like, what's your normative theory? How does it work? And just spell it out for me, and then maybe I could start working from there. Um, the name of the trait is a useful tool to try to tease out things that like it gets the, it tries to tease out things where people sometimes don't aren't completely sure of their normative theory and they it makes them like kind of second guess it but like in, in terms of the things you brought to the table i i don't see that those things as like i wouldn't say it's the only way i can see you making the case that it's an informal fallacy if you can make the case that it would be an informal not an informal fallacy on the argument itself it would be an informal fallacy on the person using it if you can show that they're implicitly assuming certain things about the other person's normative theory that they didn't hold or they didn't, they held it in a certain yeah, way. Yeah, that's but, what I'm accusing. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's I what mean, I'm accusing of. Yeah. There's, I mean, there's but, implicit yeah, assumptions sure. at play that the argument rests on foundationally that just aren't the right the assumptions. Right. Well, I don't know if the argument, I, you can make it on the person. I don't know if I would make that on the argument because I understand the argument. I think properly understood with the argument if you include essential and Sounds accidental like and of, of, uh, loaded properties. Questions. Wait, hold on. Let me just finish this point. Like, if you include essential, accidental, um, uh, extrinsic, and extrinsic properties, 
um, I don't see how that would be invalid because like it would to say it would be invalid um, would have to go against like things like identity of indiscernibles and possibly even uh, the law of identity definitely the identity of indiscernibles if you if you define trait to be accidental properties essential properties extrinsic and extrinsic um, then it could actually just mean every, anything because if you just equalize all the traits then you actually do get the same exact thing. So somewhere along the line of all those different traits, has to, something needs to be captured that you would value it differently. Uh, it has to be that way. Just li it, otherwise, you, you go against identity of indiscernibles. Yeah, I'm not sure what point you're trying to make. <laughs> no, I'm well, I'm trying to make that if, that if that's how traits are identified up, I don't see how it could be fallacious. Um, unless you want to make the case that the person themselves is making an informal fallacy by the way they're using it, trying to, uh, that they would have assumed that you're operating under a certain way that they're not. I, which seems like that's to what you're trying to, to say. Although I would just say, like, there's nothing that, none of the things that you've mentioned, whether it's group versus singular, or whether it's, um, or, or, or anything you've brought I mean, to the I, table. I, I, let me just change my wording. I, I think that uh, fallacious there it's probably easily be captured, you know, I think it might be easier to be said, and this is this is probably uh, a poor use of language uh, on my part, it's probably easier just to be said that the, that the argument is just unsound, right? Okay, so you, okay, you're changing it from not valid to not sound. Okay, that's fine, yeah. You can reject the premises, that's totally fine. I mean, you could, yeah. Are you backtracking? Yeah, no, I mean that's fine. You can you can say there's a rejection of one of the premises in the argument. Then you can say, but like it seems to me the argument is definitely valid. Now you can say it's not sound because you reject a premise. That's that's fine. I mean, I tried to conceptualize it as I was using a different inferential scheme, right? And so the inference that I'm employing is not the inference. The inference he's accusing me of is not the inference I'm employing. So there's some type of equivocation. So there must be a fallacy. Right. But well, that would be on the person, not the argument, right? It could also be restated very simply as the principle he employing is false because I'm not employing that principle. So let's just say unsound. Yeah, I mean, if you're talking about a fallacy, I mean, it's, it seems to me it was be on the person. Like, if you want to make the case that, okay, this person equivocated or this person um, assumed I was, like, operating under a certain inference that I wasn't, that's fine. I still don't see how that gets the actual argument itself being invalid. So you can say it's unsound. You can reject the premise. That's fine. Essentially, essentially what I'm saying is still the same. I mean, I'm, sh I'm showing that, that what I think is wrong with it, and I, I try to identify exactly what I thought was wrong with it, you know? And so, you know, regardless... You, of, you would if, still have to say it's not sound and not, not valid, though. What's that? Like you would still come to the conclusion that it's not sound, but I don't see how you would come to the conclusion that the argument itself is not valid. Like you acknowledge if you define trait to be accidental, essential, intrinsic, or extrinsic, then if you equalize all accidental properties, all essential properties, all intrinsic and all extrinsic properties of two different things, then they would just be the same thing. A would just be equal A at that point. Um, you're, that's, yeah. This is a... This is a principle of identity of indiscernible. So somewhere along yeah, the way, yeah, obviously. yeah. So somewhere along the way, there has to be something, whether it's an essential property, an accidental property, an extrinsic or an extrinsic property, for which it would change your view, and eventually you would switch over and say, "Hey, it does have of more course. value, or it doesn't." Yeah, I mean that's the bottom line. So uh, the question would just be, okay, like what are those properties? Um, and you may not be able to spell them all out, but like at some point, like they would be there. They'd have to be. I've never seen a formal rendition of the argument or anything like that. I've, I've actually never even read the paper, but I have heard people um, speak the argument to me and stuff. And so, like, I'm not really, I'm not even sure, like, if he's formalized it or what the formal presentation looks like or anything like the. I mean, but. I was I, the problem I've identified is still the same. But, I mean, regardless of whether we, whether we call it, if it's more proper to say that the principle, you know, the premise that he's using as a principle is false, you know, if that's more precise, that's fine. But like the, my point, you know, whatever we call it, if it's a, uh, if I'm wrong on on the nature of what is it's proper to be called, right? That that's very trivial because 
I'm, my real point is about the nature of it and what's going on and what I think is the problem. So, I mean, essentially, if you, if you want, you know, I mean, I could, I could grant you that, but it's a, it's a very trivial and hollow victory because, you know, the real, the real, I mean, I, all you're saying is uh, uh, the only conclusion would be I'm using a terminology idiosyncratically or something. But I mean, uh, the point, the content of what I'm offering still stands. And so, I mean, you know, half a point for you, I guess. We'll just, we'll just award you that. Yeah, I mean, I, I just don't, like, here's, I mean, I don't see, I, 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 like, I haven't, like, believe me, like, here's the thing, Seamus, like, I would love to eat meat right now. I love meat. I love steak. Fucking do it, pussy. I love I love chicken. <laughs> I love pork. I love like I and I want to like and on the health and on health issues where I would also debate like I would love for I would love for like I've been working on making the most anti-vegan health arguments ever. Like and I would love to make anti-vegan ethical arguments too. I would love for you to persuade me off of this. I'm very much unpersuaded by the things you're saying. I, and this is coming from someone who would really, really, I'm not really. To, this was yeah. never me. No, I understand. No, I, I, I understand. I, I get it. I, no, I'm just being. I'm like, I'm being real with you right now. Like, I'm not just like trying, like, like, oh, I'm just like, I'm just trying. I'm just temporarily taking my debate hat off, and I'm just leveling with you, Seamus. Like, I'm like someone who would really like to eat meat. Like, I fucking love it. I fucking love steak. Fucking love chicken. I love dairy. Yeah, I understand the sentiment you're expressing. It's like the agnostic, the hopeful yeah. agnostic. I would love for God to exist. You know, I just really, you know, I don't see any evidence for it or whatever. You know, so I understand that you really would like to have the right reasons to eat meat, and he would really like to have the right reasons to believe a God existed. You know, whatever. I, I understand that. I understand the sentiment. You know, of course you would like to eat meat. I know the vegan diet kind of sucks, dude. And so, yeah, of course, you would be, you have motivations, and you would be very susceptible to any argument that you thought was good enough to get you back on the meat eating train. Of course, you would, definitely. Uh, of course, uh, but I mean, uh, those are just kind of you know, little like fun facts or something. I mean, I never was trying to convince you out of it, but it's it's nice to know that about you. I, I already kind of suspected that. I suspect that of most vegans who still have a pair of balls on them, and that aren't completely cut. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I don't really have any arguments to convince you out of your veganism. I, I normally take a defensive position against vegans who are trying to uh, prove me inconsistent or some shit like that. Yeah, I mean, I never, I mean, look, I don't think I, people who, I don't think the, anyone who uses the argument properly would, if you name the trait as your viscerality, I don't think anyone would fuse inconsistent. Um, it's just not something like, that's not a principle I would ever want to hold. So I, I wouldn't work for me. But you, you would work for a consistency for you because you're comfortable holding a principle like that, sure. Anyway, are there other things that you debate about? Do um, you debate health or philosophy? Or or... Uh, I debate about a lot of philosophy. I mean, just, just random shit. Like, I'm interested in philosophy or religion. You debate like I'm interested in meta ethics if you want. You seem to you know something like about meta ethics. Do you debate like empirical aspects of veganism or do you um, like it like health based arguments? I'm not or? interested in the empirical aspects of anything. Oh, okay. You're just purely purely in philosophy. Yeah. I hate, well, I really don't like to debate empirical stuff because I find it like, I find it kind of a waste of time, you know? It's just like when people are debating empirical facts, I just would like to just slap them both in the face, pause the argument, and go send them off to the uh, encyclopedias and come back and find out who's the victor. You know, because they, they think somehow their argument's going to decide who wins. <laughs> no, the, the empirical facts are going to decide who wins. Y'all need to go consult those. And so I just find all the arguments just really stupid. And I, it, I never participate in them, like, ever. Like, I just try to stay away from that kind of baggage. No, a, I feel like I switch off. I feel like there's sometimes, like, I go philosophy and, like, in principles and stuff like that. But then there's times where, like, I, I'm like... Oh man, it would just be nice for like a debate to hinge on just who's right, like in terms of like empirical facts. And there's something refreshing about having a debate like that. Yeah, but I mean, like that's it. Just seems kind of boring and trivial to me. Like, like okay, who's right or who's wrong? Uh, well, the encyclopedia says person A is right. 
like I mean, it's, well, it's not it's that not like, simple. I mean, it's not like he won anything. He just was he just was right about the facts. It's not like he he walked through some inferences. Now, I mean, there are instances in which you look at the facts, right? Because science oftentimes looks at the facts and then they make inferences from them. You know, that, and then there are elements of which you could debate about empirical things, but it's not really empirical if you're debating like what's implied from it. Like if everyone gets the data now, what? How do we interpret it? Type things. But again, that's not even yeah, yeah. No, the interpretation. I understand. Is empirical. The interpretation is still. Yeah, I mean, I think it's like, uh, yeah, I understand. But it's like, of course, like none of my debates ever, none of my empirical debates ever like resolved down to okay, let's just look at the encyclopedia and see who's right. I mean, it's like it got some way more complicated. It involves a lot of calculation. It involves um, a lot of analysis, and then it involves a well-reasoned argument from all of that. And I just think there's something refreshing about that, like to take a break from like philosophy style debating. I don't know. I mean, you can not share that sentiment. That's fine. But like, that's well, speaking, like. Speaking yeah. of um, empirical arguments, Avi, what are your thoughts? I don't know if there's an official name for it. But I, I just call it the uh, comparative morphology argument against veganism. You kind comparative of morphology? Framework. No, I don't know what you mean. Uh, well, it's comparing uh, digestive systems across species, in, and in particular, uh, herbivores, carnivores versus humans, and how humans are simple-stomached carnivores versus, say, like a ruminant that has a foregut that's used to uh, turn the carbohydrates into volatile fatty acids. Uh, and, and the same. <laughs> no, I think that's like well, I don't. What's the I don't think it matters. I, honestly, I, I wouldn't view, even if we were ruminants, even if we had four guts, and it, or even if we were like, uh, or even if we were simple stomachs. Um, no, we are simple stomachs. Yeah, yeah, no, we're, we're, yeah simple stomach. I don't think we're a simple stomach as a carnivore. Um, we, are sim we are like somewhere in between. Uh, almost as uh, if we're omnivores. Crazy. Right, I agree. Um, I agree yeah. th with that, but I think that there's there's an argument to be made about the necessity of uh, eating meat from from our morphology. Yeah. So the thing, the thing, I, I think that argument would be very, very weak. Um, and the reason, and and the reason is, is, it depends on what you're considering your goal is. Um, if your goal is to be healthy, it's not going like an appeal to evolution will be very weak. Evolution is not in the business. Evolution is only in the business of keeping you healthy to the extent that it would maximize your reproductive. It's not an argument from evolution. It's an argument from comparative morphology. Even even an argument comparative morphology would be weak. I mean, the best evidence in the face of the the best in the especially in the face of meta analyses of clinical trials, or or well controlled like huge prospective cohort studies, um, it, it would just it would just be such a weird argument to make. I mean, I would never expect an argument like that. To be made, if the same level of evidence would exist in like the field of medicine, if someone would to make an argument like this, they would be laughed out of the room. I mean, it, it, you have to go by the base. There's an evidence hierarchy, Ace. and you go. Well, based I don't know. On, I, I don't know if you even know the argument. I haven't even ran through it yet. No, but even like I, I don't. Here's the thing: like at, at the point of, if your goal is to decide what's going to be healthy for you, your argument would need to hinge on something along the lines of the evidence hierarchy. It shouldn't be based on morphology. Uh, and it's, it, well, it's just seeming very speculative. Is, evolution is based in comparative morphology, right? right? No, I, I understand. Ace, Ace. evolution are based in that. Yeah, no, I, I understand that, Ace. But, like, what's the – therefore what? Uh, so, again, we, we are not equipped like other animals, not just animals that have four guts, but also uh, monogastric animals such as gorillas have special adaptations to deal with uh, complex carbohydrates and to turn them into proteins and uh, microbial proteins and fatty acids, which is what they actually digest or intake. Therefore, what is? So the argument is, is that because we do not have these specific features, that uh, we, our bodies are essentially, you know, not, not just from uh, the canines. Yeah, do you we think have, we can't digest complex gut. carbohydrates? Uh, no, uh, we can't. We can digest simple carbohydrates. We can digest we can, what, what do you mean, what, just to be clear, what are you defining to be a complex carbohydrate? Like cellulose and that kind of stuff. That's not, that's not a okay. So no, I mean, yes, that wouldn't be. Is. So no, I understand. Okay, but okay, hold. <laughs> okay, right. No, there's <laughs> complex. Okay, but here, okay, Ace. There's complex 
there, there's starch is a complex carbohydrate. So is cellulose. Right. We can digest that. Yeah. We can yeah. di so we some complex that. carbohydrates we can dissolve. Some Sol, carbohydrates yes. can't. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so what? So what's the conclusion? What's the so that's an argument for con conscientious omnivorism, not for veganism. Um, I mean, if I, that's I, I, the I, level I, of the I, argument you want to go by, I guess. I mean, it's just like I, I don't get from from there. Well, I don't I understand even, how someone I even presented the argument. Yeah. Yeah, but no, but I, I, Ace, I don't understand. Like, here's the thing. Here's here's my bottom line. Here's my here's my epistemology, and you can take it or leave it. If there are, if I want to determine if something is healthy, if X, Y, or Z is healthy. What I'm going, the first thing I'm going to go to is I'm going to go to the highest levels of empirical evidence. And that would be meta-analyses. If meta-analyses of, or in systematic reviews of well done, uh, long, high, high sample size, uh, prospective con controlled, uh, well controlled uh, trials or prospective studies that have the relevant things that I'm trying to compare it to. Okay, well, I would well, never, I would try, I here's the thing, there. Is I would, wait, 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 wait. I, I agree with you there, but the thing is, is that most of those meta-analyses do not correct for health conscientiousness, so, so there's actually some of them, some of them do, too, some, yes. of, some of them do, I agree, but most of the ones that are thrown around, and, and then the no, other I, thing, the, the other the ones th that do, no, wait, 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 and the ones that do, the meta-analyses that actually do correct for health conscientiousness find that there's no difference in health or longevity amongst health conscientious omnivores and health conscientious vegans. So, so I would like to see that because like I've seen, I've seen large prospective studies and of the, of the, what probably the most health conscious group that is out there, which are the Seventh-day Adventists, um, it's literally built into their religion to be healthy. Uh, and to, to strive to be healthy as yeah. part of their religion. Yeah, yeah, the purity value. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and, and if you yeah, look at that group, if you look at the omnivores in that group, and if you look at the vegans in that group, and you look at the pesco-vegetarians in that group, I mean, or, or the vegetarians and non-vegetarians, I mean, they did not do the same at all. I mean, there was a striking difference. I mean, maybe that, that that would be an interesting study. I'd love to read it. If you yeah, sure. I'll post it right now. Yeah. Would you like to see it? I mean, yeah, yeah. And then um, I'm, I'm eating right now, but I will grab the, uh, the study that I have that I found that said, you know, when you correct for health conscientiousness of groups, because obviously the average meat eater is not very health conscious. Right. So what they did is they did a very special study where they actually um, analyze health food shoppers. So the people that go to Whole Foods or Mother's Market or Sprouts or whatever, and uh, they they did a longitudinal study on these kinds of people, and they found that there's there's really no significant difference in in health between between the two groups. I'll have to see like the study in full because yeah. I, I yeah absolutely I, I wouldn't part. I wouldn't I wouldn't want you to comment on a study I haven't read. Yeah, I, I can't comment on a study I haven't read in full, and. Um, Yes. Yeah, I mean, like when I'm posting a study too, like I've actually read this study in full. I'll post it in the main chat. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the same way. Um, so I would have to read it in full because the thing is, by the way, um, the Whole Foods thing is not like actually healthier. There's no evidence for that. Yeah. Like, I, I understand I, the point is for health consciousness, but like just – No, 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 just, no. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the, the, it doesn't actually – a lot of things that are health conscious um, may actually turn out to be – and sometimes often sometimes actually less healthy and sometimes oh, like sure. measuring health there's, consciousness actually cuts against that control fluoride is healthy right and there's there's even some arguments that uh you know like the whole there's like anti-organic arguments where like some of the pesticides that, oh i'm uh, incredibly anti-organic by the way like i'm in i'm in a, i am a strong anti-organic vegan on ethic for ethical reasons by the way you you know you would like oh, what's her name uh the unnatural vegan on YouTube, or what's, I think that's- I don't know if I like her. I mean, this is the one issue where she's actually right, uh, where she's uh -huh. like, yeah. I mean, this is like, uh, but I've had an organic debate, actually. I debated another vegan on organic, and I got him to concede. Oh, interesting. Have you heard of conscientious omnivore? That's what I am. Conscientious no, yeah, yeah, but he's like, a, like the YouTuber oh, conscientious oh. omnivore. Like, he's actually- No, I haven't. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah he's a vegan. I, yeah, I debated I mean, him I mean, on, uh, on uh, organic for like, two hours or something yeah and i'm sure you've heard a lot of the arguments from like conscientious omnivores like the whole idea like i support uh local dairy farms by purchasing um milk that comes from these these farms and and um, 
I want to support more local butchers, but there's not a really good place I can get meat uh, 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 in small quantities. I, I would have to get a large quantity if I wanted to do that. So I'm very. Yeah. I mean, very I'm anti organic for, for like a number of reasons, actually. I actually view it to be worse for the environment, not better. Um, yeah, I've heard some of those arguments. Yeah, I've worse. And not, it's not just from the pesticides. Actually, like if you look at the way they measure greenhouse gas emissions, um, I view organic to be. Yeah, I view organic to be worse. I mean, there's a number of like dishonest things that are done when they measure greenhouse gas emissions and compare conventional to organic. Um, one thing they do is they do it based on land and not based on food produced. The other thing they do, if they do it based on food produced, they won't s separate out the types of food. And so basically they'll have four, cause like 45% more meat comes from conventional per, per than uh, organic. And if you controlled yeah. for the amount of meat in there, most of the carbon footprints coming from the meat. And so if you just equalize that out, you actually get in favor of conventional over organic for greenhouse gas emissions. And then the ones yeah, that do control for different cereals and vegetables and whatnot, basically the, what they do is they just negate all of the environmental effects of using animal-based fertilizer, which decrease the production cost of these mm -hmm. cows, which will result in less decreasing the cost of meat, which more people buy meat and more cows will be bred, farting more methane. And so basically they're assuming that these that the manure just comes out of nowhere and basically doesn't give it any like credence yeah, that's for exactly greenhouse right. gas emissions. Right, 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 right. So yeah, I actually I view, I actually, if you correct for that, you should get it definitely to be worse. You should get it to be worse for organic. So I, I take a, an anti-organic right, stance right. ethically because I don't view it to be moral to buy, to, to buy um, plant products that go out of their way to use animal products for fertilizer to decrease right, the right, cost production. Right, right. So ethically, I'm most of my reason for anti-organic is eth being an ethical vegan. I am strongly anti-organic, but even on the on the health thing, there's no evidence it makes any difference either way. There's no evidence it's more nutritious. There's no evidence that uh, yeah, yeah, the health is, is any different at all. Well, um, I, I, and I some argue... evidence. There's some evidence, maybe worse. For, for veganism, I For agree, organic. Yeah. There's some evidence organic would oh, okay. be worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, because, like, the, without artificial fertilizers, if you're just, like, actually doing the actual shit, which is literally what it is, yeah, um, so you're going to have no. higher E. coli counts. Um, yeah. And yeah. since organic actually does get, like, at least 40%, around 40% of its manure from basically just factory-farmed, animals with, that are injected with antibiotics all the time, you consistently find multi-drug resistant bacteria in them. Yep. And uh, Actually, one, so it, look, one out of five sepsis to... cases from according yeah, to the CDC. It's... One out of five sepsis cases can be traced back to the animal agriculture industry. Yeah, and isn't it, isn't it the case that the majority of uh, hospitalizations for food Ill borne illnesses are from you know, these, these vegetables that have these... Uh, Bacteria or it could be vegetables. It's, it's both. It's it's the vegetables, but it's also the meat products too, mm. because like the chicken often has like uh, salmonella, and the, the the pork has has. A lot of it has to do with the handling of the vegetables. Yeah, it's handling. It's yep. Yeah, it's yeah. the. Those I are, think but they, the point is, there's a study, and like eighty yeah. percent of the contamination came from after the uh, food yes, was exactly. already prepared. Yeah, I I posted that actually. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Abi, so, here's the real question though. Uh, are oysters vegan? Uh, probably they probably are. I but I think they may be. You can make a case for the precautionary principle. Uh, uh, you you may be able to make a case for us. I mean, I probably they probably are vegan though. I I think they are. I mean, if I had, to, if someone I, would put I, a gun to my I, head and say, yeah, I would you know, suggest more vegans eat oysters just for the um, you know, the nutrients that I I, I think they're sorely missing. But that's another argument. Yeah, I mean, so so the, the bottom line is I think. I mean, I'm like more like right now where I'm at right now is my the head the big head hunter I am besides uh, Holocaust revisionism. Uh, the big head uh, head hunter I mainly am right now is uh, organic vegans. I really like what really gets under my skin more than anything else. By far, is an organic vegan. More than like someone who's going to be like, okay, name the traits invalid. More than someone who's going to be like, a, like some more than debating carnage. Like car I'm, I'm like not triggered by that, any of that stuff. I am completely, there's a couple of things I'm triggered by. A couple of beliefs. Um, vegans who are antinatalists trigger me and vegans who are, are pro-organic trigger me to no end. 
Like those two That's people. That's probably the majority of them. So you're, so you're probably. Oh yeah, I had to purge. Oh, right? I, I, I went on a crusade and basically eliminated those two views from the vegans and the ask yourself discord. Oh, nice. Like that, that those ideologies are no longer there. Like I, I sit, I went on like a month, multi-month long crusade against like just hammering out those ideologies from the vegans. Because those those two things like incredibly, incredibly are are just just the terror. There are certain things in not banning. It's not about banning them. It's like it's, it, I ban them for this if they were for the same reasons as that I ban any other ones. Not have to do with our ideology. It's just that they're engaging in <laughs> engaging unfairly or or talking over people incessantly or just interjecting and won't shut up when someone else is trying to talk at all. The same kind of things, or just uh, talking about or posting studies disingenuously, like someone. Anyway, uh, but the point of the the point I lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So we I purged.